Okay, so it seems that it's about to be done. Alrighty, so we're gonna close that out. And okay, so now the blue one is this new polygon that we have, but it's broken up into a bunch of smaller squares. So when we run our analysis, it's gonna run much faster than if it was just one big square. So we're gonna go up to plugins. Sorry, I went a little faster. We're gonna go to plugins up top, and we're gonna type in spatial. I already have this plugin installed, so here's yours is gonna look like that. You're gonna click it, spatial query plugin, and then close out once you have it up and ready. So you're gonna to go to vector and then spatial query. I'm gonna click on that. Okay. So we are selecting from merge points that are within the clipped fish net, and we're gonna click apply. So the thing is, we're actually looking for the ones that are outside of the clipped fish net, but in QGIS, you can select all the ones that are within it, and then the ones that aren't gonna be selected fall without. So you can just reverse the selection, because uh, there is no option for outside, so you do within, and then just reverse the selection. And this might, I think, take two to three minutes. So again, it's still faster to do it this way than it than the other way. It does take some time, but I'm just going to pause the video and then we'll start back up once it is done. Alrighty, it looks like we're about to get our result. Okay, so we have all of our results. You can just exit out of this. So I had to I just go down and hit close. Okay, so all the ones in yellow are the ones that are selected. But remember, we selected all the ones that are within, but we really want to find out the, all of the ones that are outside. So we're going to go to merge points, right click on it, go up to attribute table. And from there, once it, it's done loading, see all the ones are selected in orange. So you can go to the top in this little green switchy arrow is invert selection. So you're going to click on that. So now all those are deselected. Go to the bottom, click on it, and click selected features. So now there are seven, seven points that fell without outside of our shoreline. So you can just click that little magnifying glass and it'll zoom you to all the ones that aren't in it and it just turns out they're all at the top of the map otherwise it might zoom you out pretty far but they're all in the same section so it could zoom in pretty good and as you can see all seven of them are right there so you're going to click on merge polygons go up to the editing part and you're going to hit the node tool this allows you to we're going to zoom in you can click it and then just kind of drag it and drop it back in so we're going to do that for all seven of them so I'm going to everyone, just click it and just drag it right back in. And do that for the fourth one. Alrighty, and then we're going to pan over a bit. So I'm going to click on the hand and move over. And da, da, da. Find the other ones that aren't there, and there's our final three that aren't inside. So we're going to click it, and right there, so I'm actually on the wrong tool. Make sure you click the node one because this one will move all of them. So I just mess up on this one. It doesn't really, it didn't affect it much, but most of the time it would change the results. So make sure you just click the node tool. I'll end up changing it back on the next one. I realized what I did, but just for your sake, make sure you're on the right tool. So we're gonna go, see, that's why I'm clicking so much because it's not highlighting red because I'm on the wrong tool. So eh, finally end up dragging it in. But that changes all of them because this one should be a little farther over. But okay, so I pan back over, and then I this time I end up on the correct tool. I'm on the node tool. So click it. You're gonna highlight, drag and drop it in, and then drag and drop that one in. And it's gonna pan around a look. Okay, they all look to be back inside of the layer. So we're just going to go up and click save our edits. And we're going to turn our editing off. Okay, so we're going to right click, go back to properties. And dun dun dun. Takes a little bit sometimes, as I said before. Okay. This one already is in African Land. We changed that earlier, my bad. So right click. We're going to save as move right past it okay so it's in the right coordinate system so we're going to hit browse and make sure you go to the right directory i have to change mine up because it 
defaults to a different folder than I actually want. And we're just going to call this one final point. So all the points are changed. We have them accurate. Everything's digitized correctly and whatnot. So final points, it's in the right projection. So click save and click OK. So wait while that adds it to the map. I'm going to deselect the merge points. And we'll just get rid of it because we don't need those anymore. And zoom the layer. There we go, all of our final points. They're two shape balls merged together and they're all inside. So we're going to go to Saga. Actually, before we go to Saga, there's one more step we want to do just to make it a little bit easier when we are in Saga. You're going to right click, go to Attribute Tables. And when you're in Saga, it's going to tell you pick your depth. But in this case, we have three depths just to make it so there are no confusions. We're going to go to Editing. We're going to delete columns. So we're going to get rid of feet and Z just so we don't use them. There's no mistake. We only have one depth field now and everything will be all right. So you're going to save your edits. And turn off editor, exit out. And now we can go into Saga. Type Saga in and turn it on. All righty. This might take a couple seconds. Already, so Saga has started up. Let me actually, there we go. So we're just going to click empty. We're going to start a new project, and you can close out of that tip. So the first thing is we got to bring in our final points so we can run a query on it. So I just have to figure out where my points are actually saved. Dun, dun, dun. I would save it folder down there. Okay, so final points, there's two of them, you want to make sure you click the .sh, so it's not double, it's just double click, adds it to your data section. So right click, add to map, just so you can see it. So there they are, there are all of our final points. You're going to go up and click the run tool bar, right up in here, and you're just going to type in Krigging. Click OK. You're going to pick the first one, which is Ordinary Krigging. Click OK. And our points are going to come from the final points. And our attribute is going to be depth. That's why we got rid of the other two, just so there was no confusion. So attribute is depth. Leave everything the same and just click OK. This might take a little bit to run. You're going to see it at the bottom. There's going to be an orange bar moving. Sometimes it grays out when it's running. Okay, so the Krigging is almost done. And there you go, pop in final points dot depth. You're just gonna right click on add it to the map, and add it to the same map as the final points, and there you go. There's our Bitherigy model. But there's a couple more steps we have to do. So you're gonna click at the tools at the top and just type in T I F. Yeah, uh, click OK. So we want to export it as a GeoTIFF. So click OK. In the grid systems, just click the drop down and click the first item. And then no objects, just click on the right dot, move the final point dot depth over, click OK. And then click in file and where do you want to save this geo tiff? So I just have to go to the proper folder. And we are going to call it. Bathy. Okay, simple enough. So type in Bathy and click Save. And then click OK. It's going to run at the bottom. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think this one takes that long. Kind of scares you when it creates up the screen though. Okay, so there we go. Alright, I think it's done, but I think I just, when I was recording it, I wasn't sure, so I just waited a little bit. So we're going to. Just go into QGIS in one second, once it is done. All right, there we go. So we're just going to go into QGIS and then go up to that and add a raster layer right over in there. Make sure I'm in the wrong folder. That's why I can't find it. So make sure you're in the right folder. 
and there it is. There's our bathy tiff. So we're going to open it up. It's going to add it to the map, but it says this coordinate reference system was undefined, so it's not coming in properly. So we're going to right click on it, go to properties, and go up to general, and change it to Africa, Africa Lambert Conformal Conic. Click apply and click OK and give it a second and bam, there it is. Okay, so it's now in the right coordinate system, but it's not actually saved in that. So you're going to right click on it and go to save as. And so it's a GeoTIFF. Make sure you change the coordinate system again. Sometimes it doesn't transfer over. So hit browse and again, make sure you're in the right folder. I always have to change mine. So we're going to just call it projected bathy. And hit save. So we're scrolling down to see. Okay, yeah, it is. You can see it's projected bathy dot tiff. So it's saving in the correct format right there. Just click OK. Give it a second while it does that. So I'm just going to remove that one. Right click on it and go up to remove. Click OK. So now that's out of there. Go back up to the add raster layer. Click on it. And I'm actually in the right folder for once. So projected bathy tiff. Okay, open it up. And notice it comes right in. You don't have to change the projection because we already did that. So now we're almost there. Got a couple more steps left. So that's our shoreline. We want to cut down that tiff to just be the shoreline. We don't need all that excess on the outside. So you're going to go up to raster, go to extraction, and go to clipper. So we're going to use the projected bathy. That's the raster we want to use. Uh, what do we want to call it? We're just going to call it, if I could spell, we're going to call it final symmetry. Click save. And you want to click mask layer. And the mask layer is going to be a Lake Victoria shoreline. So we're going to just cut out everything that's not inside of that shoreline. So you click OK. Give it a second while it runs. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the process is complete. You can just hit OK, close that out. So you can turn that off and turn that off. So now here, well, there it is. It's clipped properly. We're just going to remove the other stuff just because we don't really need it anymore. You could get rid of the fish nets and the clip fish nets. I just chose not to for some reason. So we're just going to move that down below it and turn on the final points. Look, all of them are inside of that bathymetry. So you're going to right click on it, go to properties, because we don't really like this gray and black. We're going to make it look uh, more appropriate for bathymetry models. So click in style, go to single band, pseudo color. It's, mine just happens to already be on blue. Yours might not be. So you're going to click classify. Uh, you can change up the values, how many breaks there are. You can clean it up a little bit so it's not 4.4. .4, make it nice and pretty. We just happen to leave it how it is just for the sake of this. So click apply, and it comes in like this. So we're about to be done, but we don't really like how those edges look. So we're going to turn on the Lake Victoria thing, and it gives it a nice little border. We're going to right-click on it. Go to properties when it pops up. Ooh, scares me when it goes gray. There we go. So go to style. We're just going to double click on the fill. Uh, we're going to change that to transparent. And the border is black, but we're going to bump up the border width to 0.5 instead of 2.6. So once that's there, going to hit OK. Let it load. And there it is. We have a proper bathymetry map of like Victoria. And if you don't like the colors, you can always go back and change them. And as I said, you can change up the breaks and clean up the numbers. You don't have 47.49580 and so on and so on. But that is the basics for how you make it. There we go.